The Amazing Mr. Malone. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery starring Gene Raymond. Our locale is the city of Chicago. The time, the present. And the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone is the name John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight I want to take my text from Aesop's fable. It was Aesop who first observed that appearances can be deceiving. Of course, he was thinking of the wolf in sheep's clothing, but he might just as well have had Carl Riker in mind. Mr. Riker is the tall, poetic-looking gentleman in the rear of the Cadillac sedan tearing down Chicago's south side in the rain. If you were judging solely by appearances, you'd say he is a gentleman and a scholar, and you'd be right. No student could be more diligent than he is in his search for the truth. Much further, Michael. No, it's the last house on this block. That one? Yeah. Ah, here we are. Uh, you want us to wait out here for you? As you will. Well, in that case, I think I'll go in and watch the fun, huh? Hey, will you look at it poor? Excuse me if I fail to admire the beauties of nature right now. <laughs> just, uh, just what are you thinking on doing, Mr. Riker? I hardly know myself. I'm such a creature of impulse. That. Friend. Just a second. Yes. Mr. Cromwell? That's right. So nice to know you. My name is Riker. Riker? Yes, and this uh, gentleman is Mr. Michael. Hiya. Uh, what do you boys want? May we uh Okay. My name means little to you, eh, Mr. Cromwell? Not a thing. Perhaps my wife's would mean more. The given name is Laura. You mean Laura Riker is your Incredible, isn't it? What do you want here? I'm a peculiar sort of a man, Mr. Cromwell. I have an unusual fixation. You're familiar with psychiatry? No. Nope. Hmm. Well, an analyst would say to me, I have very strong acquisitive instincts. Definitely antisocial. I, I can't bring myself to share any of my belongings. Look, Riker, get to the point. <laughs> you must forgive me, sir. I do have a tendency to wander. Any time I do, please don't hesitate. What do you want? A very simple thing. Hardly worth mentioning. Your life. You crazy. Hey, put that gun away, Mr. Riker. I didn't bargain for nothing like this. No, I'm sure you didn't. Now, listen, mister. You got this all wrong. I had nothing to do with your wife. Ask her. Laura will tell you. You disappoint me, Mr. Cromwell. I expected better of you. What are you afraid of? Have you ever read Aristophanes? For Pete's sake, man. No. Well, well, it was he who wrote, For what is death but an eternal sleep? So I say to you, Pleasant dreams, Mr. Cromwell. No, don't. The name of... Oh, Dave, I'm so glad you decided to come home with me. Yeah. You think all right? Fine, Evelyn. Who's there? Police. I'll take it, Evelyn. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for a Dave Cromwell. Are you? Yeah. Did you have a brother named George? What do you mean, did I have? Dave. Well, you better come in, Lieutenant. Thank you. <coughs> Nasty night, isn't it? Don't tell me you dropped in just to get in out of the rain. Well, I, uh, I hardly know where to begin. You might try the beginning. All right. An hour ago, we got a call from the superintendent of your brother's place. Go on. When we got down there... We found him murdered. He'd been shot twice. I see. You wouldn't have any idea. None at all. I realize what a shock this must be, Mr. Cromwell. If you'd like, I can come back later. Yeah, you do that, Lieutenant. You wouldn't want to venture to... No, I wouldn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Well, good night. Good night, Mrs. Cromwell. Good night. Get my coat up. Darling, you're not going on. Did you hear what I said? Of course, Steve. Dave, what are you doing? Please, give me that gun. Shut up. If you know who killed George... I got a pretty good idea. Let the police take it. 
Take care of him. I thought I told you to get my coat. Please, darling, listen to me. Why should I when you don't listen to me? Now go on, get it. (laughs) Got a lot of work to do tonight. Mysterious slaying on South Side. George Cromwell, age 31. Laura! Laura, darling, I was talking to you. What do you want, Carl? Would you care to see the paper? No, thanks. You know, Angel, I can't understand you. You can? No. You seem to have no desire to keep up with what's going on in the world. Why, isn't that a shame? These are momentous times, Laura. Every day brings something new. Uh, take tonight's edition, for example. Right here on the first page. Carl, I want to talk to you. Of course, dear. I'm all ears. I want a divorce. Oh. Disappoint me. I thought we were going to have a serious talk. I am serious. You can't be, Laura. You've been through this before. You know how I feel. Yes, you uh, own me. You're bitter, dear. I want a divorce, Carl. Perhaps you'd better read this first. Mysterious slaying on South Side. The young man's name was Cromwell. Cromwell? Didn't you know someone by that name? You you killed him. Now, darling, you're jumping to conclusions. You killed him. Not so loud, Laura. What will the servants think? Shall we continue our discussion of divorce? I'll pay you back for this. Oh, you're upset. Go to sleep, Lucian. You'll feel better in the morning. Larry's barn grew. Is uh, Mr. Michaels there? Uh, just a second. Hey, any you boys seen Cokie Michaels around? No, not tonight. I'm sorry, pal, he ain't here. Well, if uh, if he should come in, will you please ask him to call Mr. Carl Riker? How's that again? Riker. R-I-K. Hello? Hello? <laughs> That's funny. Hey, any you guys ever hear of a Carl Riker before? No, why? Well, I got a feeling I just heard the last of them. It was just one of those things. Just one of those crazy things. One of those bells that now and then ring. Just one of those things. It was just one of those nights. Just one of those fat You know, I thought you were never going to make it. I beg your pardon? Generally, I'm interrupted on the first 16 bars. What's your name, friend? Kenneth Harrison. You're probably wondering how I got in your office. I'm not even going to ask, unless you've got something better to offer than the door was open. You're not going to believe this, Mr. Malone. No, so you might as well spare me. If I've offended you, sir, perhaps this will make up for it. Hey, what do you call that stuff, anyway? Money? Yeah, I thought it looked familiar. I once saw some about three years ago. I... There's twenty-five hundred dollars here, Mr. Malone. It's all yours. What giveaway show are you with? Did you see this morning's paper? Well, well, did you happen to notice a story about the murder of a gentleman named Carl Reich? Yeah, the police are holding his wife. His wife happens to be my sister. I see. Do you? Maybe not. I'd like you to represent her. This money should be sufficient for retainer. If I take the case. Why should you refuse to? Well, first of all... You want to assure yourself that Laura is innocent. How'd you know I was going to say that? I merely anticipated. Well, I'll tell you, Harrison. After you talk to Laura, you want to talk to me again. Did you ever think of going in for mind reading? I had considered it. Well, if I... If you should want to reach me, I'm at the Maynard Hotel. There you go again. Say, do you know everything? Just about. Then maybe you can tell me why I got a feeling I've just been had. Okay, Harrison, I'll be seeing you. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone, starring Gene Raymond. You know, everybody likes a bargain. That's the American way. We like to know that we're getting more than our money's worth when we buy something. And buying United States savings bonds would be getting more than your money's worth. Return of $4 for every three invested is a pretty good deal. And that's what United States E-Class savings bonds pay at maturity. So take advantage now of the opportunity to buy United States savings bonds. They can be purchased at banks or post offices or through the payroll savings plan where you work. 
Think of your future today and buy United States savings bonds. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Thirty-two minutes and seventeen seconds later, I was down at police headquarters, which was twelve minutes and fourteen seconds over schedule. But I stopped off at the bank first, where I discovered that the twenty-five hundred bucks Kenneth Harrison had wished on me were apparently genuine. With his accent, I had a feeling it might be Confederate money. Then I hustled over to headquarters to earn my fee. Believe me, when you deal with a guy like Lieutenant Brooks, you're really doing it the hard way. Well, if it isn't the amazing Mr. Malone. Uh Uh-huh. That's a nice snappy comeback. Uh Uh-huh. How do you think of things like that? I listen to Bob Hope. Where's my client? Sussman, send in Mrs. Riker. Wait a minute, Brooks. How did you know I was representing Mrs. Riker? Oh, you think you're the only one who can be amazing? Excuse me, I was... Oh, yeah, come in, Mrs. Riker. Your lawyer is here. Uh, my lawyer? I'm John J. Malone. Who? John J. Malone. I never heard of you. Honey, you can have anything you want on the house. Pay no attention to him, Laura. He's just sore because I'm going to get you out. Just what is going on here? Your brother retained me to represent you. My brother? Uh Uh-huh. Kenneth Harrison. You haven't had time to do much research, have you, Mr. Malone? What do you mean? I'm an only child. You're a what? Are you ambulance chasing, Malone? Look, Lieutenant, I give you my word. This character came in and told me he was Mrs. Riker's brother. That's very funny. You don't know how funny it is. He gave me a $2,500 retainer. He he what? So help me, that's the truth. You know a tall, good-looking boy from below the mint julep line, about 6'1"? No. You sure? I'm positive. Oh, why should he give me $2,500? I have no idea. Well, do you want me? Why should I? You could do a lot worse. Ask the lieutenant. Oh, keep me out of this. I'm prejudiced. How How do I know this isn't some trick? What can you possibly lose if you tell a straight story? Yes, as you say, what can I lose? All right, first of all, did you kill your husband? No. Okay, then we can continue. You're amazing, Mr. Malone. Already, you know she's innocent. Already, I know. Do you also know that she threatened her husband last night about two hours before he died? That's a lie. The chauffeur heard you, Mrs. Riker. What might this chauffeur's name be? Michaels. Cokie Michaels. Cokie Michaels. Is that isn't the same one? Yeah, that... yeah. How long has he been working for you, lover? He didn't work for me. He was employed by my husband. Doing what? I can't imagine. Well, I can tell you. He was keeping tabs on you. I don't believe it. You were seeing a boy named George Cromwell, weren't you? Who? George Cromwell? No. Now, you better be careful in your answers, Mrs. Riker. You know, Cromwell was murdered last night. Do you think she did it? No. I think her husband killed him, and then she went to work on her husband. You're insane. You weren't stepping out with this George Cromwell. On my word of honor. Michael says otherwise. Mm, I wonder why. So long, Mrs. Riker. If you're going over to see Michaels, Malone, you're wasting your time. I've already had a crack at him. I'm glad to hear that, Lieutenant. Then you certainly can't begrudge me my turn at bat. Hey, Larry, let me have another shot, will you? with you, Michael. Can I buy you one? What? Matter, Nichols. Michaels, don't you remember me? Sure, I remember you, Mr. Malone. Suppose we sit down at a table. You sit down. I like this fine. Here's your drink, Michaels. Uh, leave the bottle, Larry. Uh, take it out of this. Hmm, yeah. folding money. You must be doing all right. The last time I saw you... It was my tough luck. What do you want, Mama? Just came from police headquarters. Did you? Yeah, representing a lady you know, Laura Riker. Hey, careful, Michael. You're going to spill that drink all over you. Look, Malone, I don't know anything about the Riker case. That's not what Lieutenant Brooks told me. I don't care what he told you. Did Riker kill George Cromwell? Who? Cromwell. Didn't you ever hear the name before? No. That's funny. You claimed Mrs. Riker was stepping out with him. Did I? You're an awfully difficult man to get anything out of nowadays. I hit the truth. Wasn't always like this. Oh, time watches on you. Maybe it's just that these surroundings aren't conducive to good talk. Suppose we take a little stroll outside. <laughs> and not that. Come on, Michael. <laughs> hey, Larry. You want me? Yeah, come over here and bring that bunk starter, will you? Madam, you looking for trouble? Not me. Well, good night, Michael. See you around. Oh, you're not leaving, Mr. Yeah, Mr. I can tell when I'm not wanted. You don't have to hit me over the head before I get the idea. <laughs> Yes? Good evening. Good evening. 
Is Mr. Dave Cromwell at home? No, he isn't. Are you Mrs. Cromwell? Yes. Well, I'm glad to know you. My name is Michaels, Corky Michaels. What's your first name? Evelyn. Uh, look, Mr. Michaels, if you want to see my husband... I most certainly do. Well, I don't expect Dave back to late tonight. Oh, that's okay. I can wait. Oh, but it might be... Don't hard. give it a thought. I got plenty of time. Yeah, I even brought him along my own refreshment. See? Hey, you got a glass? Glass? Oh, never mind. I don't need one. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Not as good as... What do you want can... with my husband? Oh, well, that's the secret, the deep, dark secret. You want a drink? No, no, thank you. Well, suit yourself. Did you ever hear of a man named Carl Reich? No. That's funny. He's been on all the papers. He was murdered last night. I used to work for him. Did you? Yeah, that's what I wanted to see your husband about. You see, they got Mrs. Riker in jail, and I'm afraid it's all my fault. Get out of here. What's the matter, Evelyn? Am I such bad company? Are you going to get out of here? Oh, now, baby, where do you think you're going? Oh, my arm. Will you behave? Oh, now, sit down there. Ow! Got no right. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Hey, your husband certainly keeps late hours, don't he? I don't think Dave's coming home tonight. No? No. Now that I remember, he, he told me that... He told you what? What? Hello, pal. We were just discussing Dave. you. What's going on here? Darling, he forced his way in. Uh, my name is Michaels, Mr. Cromwell. I wanted to talk to you. About what? About the Riker case. What about it? Well, suppose you tell the missus to blow, huh? Go on, Evelyn. Darling, Go on. I want to talk to this gentleman alone. Sweetheart, you mustn't let yourself be... Go on, Evelyn. <laughs> hey, boy, you certainly got the power. How you do it, huh? You said you want to talk about the Riker case. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know they're holding this missus. Yeah, I read the papers. Did you read John J. Malone was representing her? Yeah, so... Well, so he's quite a boy. All he needs is a little lead and boom. I bet he gets the answer just like... Like that. What is the answer, Mr. Michael? Well, it goes back to your brother's murder. How's that? Ah, oh, quit acting surprised, Cromwell. We both know Riker killed him. How do you know? I was there. What? <laughs> hey, hey, cut it out. You're choking me. I, I swear I didn't know what Riker was going to do. All right, talk. Well, well, somebody gave Riker a bum steer. He thought his wife was seeing your brother. And all the while it was me? Yeah, I guess you must have used your brother's apartment for the meeting place. Now, what was the name of this somebody who tipped off Riker? I don't know. I, I think he had a private day. You're lying. <laughs> no. Come on, Michaels, admit it. You were the one who brought Riker to my brother. No, I swear. I did. All right, get up, Michaels. We're going to play 20 questions. <laughs> Only me, Laura. Thanks, Sidney. Well, isn't he amazing, Mr. Malone? I didn't expect you back tonight. I didn't expect to be back. Did you accomplish anything? Yes and no. Now, what's that supposed to mean? I figured out a way to prove your innocence. Can you? Yes, indeed. How? All you got to do is submit to an injection of sodium amytal. A what? It's what they call the truth serum. Oh, no. Come on, lover. What can you lose? Seems to me you used that line before. I thought those kind of tests weren't admissible in court. They aren't. Well, then what good is it? Maybe I just want to convince myself. What do you say, Laura? Well, I always thought I was a pretty accomplished liar. Hang on, your hypodermic, Malone. I think I can beat it. We'll be ready to roll in a minute, Counselor. Good. Say, uh, hello. Yeah. I'm going to donate my life to science. Don't you think I'm entitled to know how this truth serum routine works? That's fairly simple, Laura. It all hinges on your unconscious mind. The doc's going to give you an injection of sodium amytal. That'll make you feel drowsy. But even then, your unconscious sometimes continues to function, and the sodium amytal releases the break. You mean I couldn't hold out on you even if I wanted to? Well, there are no guarantees with this deal. All right, doctor, whenever you're ready. I'm ready now, Mr. Malone. Will you hold out your arm, Mr. Bright? This won't hurt us. Ow! Sorry. Sorry. Now, now will you start counting backwards slowly from 100? 99, 98, 97, 96, 
He's off now. Okay, go ahead. What's your name? Laura Riker. Where were you born? In New York. How long did you live there? Till I was 17. Three hours in a little hole in the wall. You don't know what it's like to be poor. That's why you married your husband? Yes. I didn't know it was going to be worse. I thought I was bettering myself. Do you know a Kenneth Harrison? Kenneth Harrison? No. No. I never heard the name before. How about a George Cromwell? I know George. You ever go out with him? No. But you were in love with him? I couldn't stand him. Do you think your husband killed him? I... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Listen to me, Mrs. Riker. I, I told you I, I don't want to discuss it. Let me alone. Let me alone. Well, what's the score, Lieutenant? Did she pass or flunk? The doc says she lied. About what? She does know a Kenneth Harrison. I thought so. But she was telling the truth when she said she didn't go out with George Cromwell and wasn't in love with him. She wasn't? Nope. Yet Michael swore she was meeting... Wait a minute. Did Cromwell share his apartment with anybody? Nope. Does he have any close friends? Not that we could discover. He seemed to spend most of his time with his brother. His brother? Yeah, a fellow named Dave Cromwell. Tall, well set up, lad. Is this brother married? Yeah, why? Well, that would probably explain why Dave didn't use... Let's go see Michaels. What for? I just want to check on a theory of relativity. <laughs> Michaels looks like Einstein in this case. <laughs> You don't answer, Malone. That's strange. Why? Well, Michaels wasn't in any of the bars. He should be home at this hour. Are you? Don't be funny. I'll tell you what. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Hey, we haven't run across one of these in ages. The door's unlocked. Yeah. Got a match? See the light switch? And that ain't all. Brutal, huh? Yeah. Well... I guess we're not going to get anything out of Mr. Michaels tonight. Tonight or any night. Call Homicide, Malone. You ought to know the number by this time. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone, starring Gene Raymond. Today as never before, the elementary public school system in America faces a critical situation. The facts are alarming. An increased birth rate during and since the war has resulted in expanded enrollments that will crowd the elementary schools with millions of additional children during the next five years. Immediate action is needed now to cope with the enormously enlarged school population. You can help to assure a proper education for your youngsters by working with local civic groups and school boards, actively seeking to improve educational conditions. Remember, better schools make better communities. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Ten minutes later, a detail from Homicide arrived. It was a pleasure to watch him work. They all made like a swarm of bees, but from the way the lieutenant looked, I could see they hadn't found much honey. You still hanging around, Malone? No, I left an hour ago. I wish you'd taken your head with you. Oh, that's a good one, lieutenant. We must send that to Red Skelton. What's up? Michaels was killed with the same gun used on Riker. After someone handed him a shellacking. How would you know that? All I have to do is look at the body. How long has he been dead? Not very. Well, as I always say, it's an ill wind that blows nobody good. Is that what you always say? Yeah, but Shakespeare probably said it first. What are you babbling about? This lets my client out. Does it? Certainly. If both Michaels and Riker were killed with the same gun, how could Mrs. Riker do it? Why couldn't she? What did she use? Thought waves? Well, I was saving it for a surprise, Malone. What? After the state's attorney heard about the results of the truth serum test, he ordered her released. He what? Yeah. Want to come along while I pick her up? 
Suppose you come along with me first. Remember why we came here originally? To check whether Riker could have killed the wrong Cromwell. Well, Michaels can't do that for us anymore, so let's go to the next best source. Hello, Mrs. Cromwell. Who are you? Don't you remember? I was here Thursday night to see your husband about his brother. Oh, you're... Lieutenant the... Brooks. And this is John J. Malone. How do you do? How do you do? Is your husband in? Well, he's asleep. Would you mind waking him? I wouldn't like to, Lieutenant. You know, Dave's been under a severe strain. He'll survive. Of course, that's uh, no guarantee for how long. Where is he, in there? No, I won't let you disturb it. Oh, now, cut that out. No. Hey, get her off of me, Malone. All right, stop it. Dave. Dave is... Well, the commotion, Lieutenant. Well, Mr. Malone and I wanted to talk to you. Yes, indeed. What's the matter, Counselor? This is Mr. Kenneth Harrison. What? Well, that's the name he used at my office. You're out of your mind. You know a Laura Riker? No, he doesn't. Will you let me handle this? Yeah, I know a Laura Riker. Did you kill her husband? No. That's enough, Evelyn. No, I didn't kill him, Mr. Malone. What about a boy named Cokie Michaels? What about him? He was murdered an hour ago. Well, let me out. Dave's been in all night. I can prove that. No, you can't, Mrs. Cromwell. The elevator boy says your husband stepped out around 11. Oh, it's only for a paper. It was for a pack of cigarettes. That's the kid. I was back in five minutes. You better come along with me, Dave. No, I won't let you take him away. For Pete's sake, Evelyn. I won't let them do it. I killed him, Lieutenant. What? I killed Mr. Riker, Mr. Michael. You forgot Cock Robin. Come on, Cromwell. You've got to believe me. I did it. Honest, I did it. She ain't kidding. What? What's the matter with you, Cromwell? Didn't you know you should have? He did it for you. Hey, Malone. Why did Mrs. Cromwell kill Riker and Michael? You're amazing. Well... Why did she? Five seconds with a woman should have told you the reason she was crazy about her husband. So she commits two murders? Sure. Both Riker and Michaels were a threat to the man she loved. She had no more compunction about knocking them off than you would have about squashing a mosquito that was biting your kid. I ain't got a kid. It's not my fault. Now, don't tell me she beat up Michaels, too. No, that was her husband's work. But after Dave got through with him, she followed Michaels home and let him have it. And all along, she knew about Dave and Mrs. Riker. Yep. And she never complained. That kind of woman never does. What a gal. How'd you spot her? It's simple. The elevator boy could cover for Dave's alibi. Why couldn't she? All right, Mr. Bones. Why couldn't she? Elementary. She wasn't there. And if she wasn't, she was the only one left in the case who had a motive and opportunity. I still don't see why it couldn't have been Laura Riker. Because both Riker and Michaels were killed with the same gun. And since Laura didn't kill her husband... Who said so? Now, what about that sodium amitol we shot into her? Oh, yeah. You know, I forgot about that, Malone. Mm. Ain't that truth serum a marvelous gimmick? Certainly is. I'm glad you thought of it. Mm. We ought to use it more often. It's over my dead body. That's the sort of things that could put us all out of business. Good night, Lieutenant. <laughs> You ever hear the story of a timid soul who never took a chance in his life? When he bought himself a gun, you'd be surprised at the difference it made. In no time at all, he was ready to shoot the work. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up in my office at the same time? Hmm? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Gene Raymond was starred as John J. Malone with Henry Morgan as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Gene Wang and directed by William P. Russo, music by Basil Adlam. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to actual places of people living or dead is entirely coincidental. And now this is Dick Tufeld inviting you to listen next week. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.